What's going on Siren Enthusiasts and Scale Modelers? Welcome to Day 5 of Siren Week. In this video I'll be talking about this HO Scale Thunderbolt Diorama. I'd also like to mention that unfortunately today is indeed the last day of Siren Week before tomorrow's live stream. So this is the last video and the last Siren that I will be talking about for this special week. I've had a blast making these videos and it seems as though you guys have liked them. And I hope you guys like this one as well. But it all has to come to an end. Be there at tomorrow's live stream. That's going to be at noon Central Daylight Time. And if you want to start submitting your questions, I suggest you do that now. Anywho, I'll be talking about this HO Scale Thunderbolt Diorama. And I suggest you sit back, relax, and find some place to get comfy since this is going to be an extensive video. Let's get this started. So, this I built in the summer of 2022. I started in late May of 2022 and finished it in June of 2022. And this is based off of a Thunderbolt that actually exists in real life. Yes, this is based off of the Thunderbolt 1000T in Lombard, Illinois. The one that is mounted next to the Highway or I-355. And therefore it's been nicknamed Highway Bolt because it's mounted next to the Highway. This siren is significant, if you will, for a few reasons across a small number of people here in the community, myself included, hence why I recreated it for a number of reasons, but I will explain my reasons right now. So back when I was five years old, I was on the highway driving to Legoland with my family, and out of nowhere, they saw this Thunderbolt, uh, the Thunderbolt 1000 at the time, and they pointed it out to me since the, uh, none of us had ever seen a siren like that, and by then they already knew about my interest in sirens, so they decided to tell me about it. And I remember just looking at it in wonder since it was such a different design that I had never seen before. And from there, on a lot of journeys that I took up into the northern suburbs, I would see this siren passing by, but I never really took the time to hear it since in 2018, when I started really getting back into sirens, I didn't have the ability to go and my uh, testing schedule was a mess. From late 2018 to 2019, that was my Evanston Thunderbolt fiasco. 2020 was COVID. And only then in 2020 did I finally start making my trips out to Lombard. And this is where my current history starts with it. I had terrible luck in Lombard. I, has, I suffered two failures uh, at both this siren and a different one that's mounted directly east of it. And I think I was responsible for giving Lombard a pretty bad rap since um, I talked about it a lot, how the, the systems failed on me. And it's also failed on a few other enthusiasts, the few that have gone to see the siren. So that's why it kind of has that reputation that okay if you want to go you're to see it it's it's a risk it might not go off and lo and behold in march of 2021 the this thing had been a single tone all of its life until this year in march of 2021 the single tone shopper suffered a catastrophic failure in the middle of a test uh, it was actually caught on video and the link to that is in the description where the chopper just suddenly stopped just stopped working and it took them a little less than a year to get that figured out, and they swapped it out with a uh, dual tone chopper, and I was one of the first to film it in March of 2022. And here we are today, I have the diorama, and here it is. I'd also like to point out that this siren is a mismatch of several different kits. The head part that you see here is actually from a build that I've had since 2019. This is what it originally looked like, and I dismantled it earlier this year before the assembly of this one. I decided to use the blower and the, uh, yeah, just the blower for a different diorama, and then the blower pipe and the head went to this diorama here, so this thing definitely does have some history with me. Here you can see everything up here, the rust patterns and the logos are all accurate to the real siren. Um, I did try to replicate them as best as I can. The head does rotate. Here you can kind of see the other side uh, with the rust pattern. This is what it looks like in real life uh, on the right side, and here's what it looks like uh, on the diorama. I'd say I did a fairly good job at replicating the rust patterns. Here's the other side if you're curious. And uh, I even did the uh, the bird poop thing on the top of the horn. Yes, I think that is uh, actually bird droppings, unfortunately. <laughs> I guess they didn't really have any mercy on this one. The logos and the patterns on the rotator box are also accurate. I did decide to add the rust stains for the uh, 
the bolts on the access panels as well as on the permanent panels. You can see the support bolts right there. Those are the brown dots. The Civil Defense logo and ID badge are also present, somewhat accurately weathered. This one is also not as accurate because I did include a bit more of the uh, white triangle that's there. And the, on the real thing, the white triangle is almost completely gone. It's just a blue circle with the Civil Defense letters on it. The Thunderbolt logos, these were really hard to do since I had to wait for just the right amount of time for some of the paint to dry and then the rest of it I had to rub away with water or a water saturated brush to dilute the paint that was applied. So that was pretty fun to do and uh, here's the other side, let me try and show you that. Here's what the other side looks like. Over here we have the antenna that goes to the control box. This is the antenna for receiving signals so the siren can activate. This is the first, this is the second time I try and add an external antenna to a siren like this and this was no easy task by any means. It's made from spare plastic parts and polystyrene plastic and it took me about three attempts to get this to even be, um, to even exist. It took me about three attempts to build the antenna before I was able to uh, paint it and then mount it on the siren which took about four attempts to get it on the siren So it was really difficult, but I managed to make do On the other side of the pole we can see the blower pipe and the blower pipe holders. They're made out of paper It's nothing I haven't done before so it just took a lot of time and some of them were stubborn They didn't want to stick and some of them stuck to my fingers So it was an arduous process as per usual you might notice up here with the conduit going up to the head, part of it is a darker gray than the rest of the conduit. That's because of the, fle the rubber flex conduit that is present on the real siren. I wanted to replicate that accurately as well. Now here's where things get com complicated and this is where things got really irritating for me. The control boxes and all of the wiring associated with that. So the gray box is a Fulton radio and here's the RCM. This wire right here going up on the left side of the pole is the antenna wire and on the right side this is the um, the power source for the head coming from the RCM. can barely see it down there but the power source from the head goes all the way down here, curves under, and then it goes straight up into the RCM. There's also a wire leading from the radio to the RCM. It's right back here. It's a little bit darker than the wire going up to the head just like the real thing. So that's that. There is an oversized and unfortunately misplaced control, uh, not control box, uh, power disconnect right here along with a smaller box which I don't know why exists but it's there on the real thing. I did also make the handle for the power disconnect point, uh, pointing up since this one is connected and uh, this is indeed a little bit too large compared to what's on the real thing. Over here we have the blower and its conduit. Uh, that was relatively smooth it wasn't it just took a lot of time to make you might notice that the blower is a little bit shorter and a little bit slimmer than the other uh, HF scale Thunderbolts that I've worked with and that's because this one is a late production blower a C-series blower and the blower covers on these were a lot smaller back here I also did uh, a blower base or a blower frame out of paper and I also added the handle uh, the grab handle to open up the cover so I did go a little bit overboard on details uh, here's the power meter and this goes up to this disconnect which then goes down to this external power source which then goes up to the siren. This external power source box is made out of both paper and polystyrene plastic parts. It was pretty hard to do but I ended up uh, being able to make it accurately to scale along with the concrete pads that support both the, um, the external power and the blower here. Now for the rest of the diorama, this tree was a large HO scale tree that I actually had to shorten. Originally the tree was about twice as tall as the siren, and obviously it's not. The ground is just the standard ground, and here you can kind of see an empty patch. That's where the tree was originally positioned, but then I realized it was inaccurate, so I had to rip it off and then re-glue it here. Uh, gluing the tree down was a really arduous process. I couldn't get it to stick, but it finally did, and that's all I really have to say. This was probably one of the most extensive, detailed, and by far one of the most tough builds that I've ever built, and I sure as hell am very proud of it. For those of you who would like to point out right now that I didn't put the bright yellow chopper cap uh, for the 1000T chopper that it currently has, I decided to keep it as a 1000 since I thought it looked better. Well, that's all I really have. I'd also like to point out that this might be, and I think it will be, my final HO scale Thunderbolt that I ever built, that I ever built before I move on to the next segment of my life, so where I won't have time or resources to build these things. 
So I decided to go all out on this one to combine everything I've learned since 2018 and building my first one to now after building so many of these little kits. Well, that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching. And that with that concludes Siren Week. Tomorrow's live stream comes at noon Central Daylight Time, so it might be different in your time depending on where you live. And that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys like this diorama, and I hope to see you guys in tomorrow's live stream. Like, comment, and subscribe. Ask your questions for the live stream tomorrow, and I'll see you tomorrow.